good afternoon to all of you. Uh, sorry to keep you waiting, okay? And our Honorable Minister is on way, and it will take another five, seven minutes for him to reach here. So please hold your breath for another five, seven minutes, okay? Please. So, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Florian Kyle. I'm the communication officer of the Conventional Migratory Species. I'd like to welcome you 
warmly to this closing press conference of the 13th conference of the parties to CMS. Um, we're going to have around 45 minutes, maybe a little bit less. Uh, plenary will resume at 2.15, so we have to be a little bit quick. I'm sorry about that, but uh, yeah, there's still some decisions to be made. So we, uh, it's an important note to the media. Uh, the final uh, decisions are still upcoming. We moved the press conference to now to make sure that we can hold it, but there are some decisions that will still be made in plenary uh, coming up. Um, yeah, my distinguished panel uh, will have the opportunity to have five to ten minutes uh, of a statement. We'll start with uh, Mr. Babu Suprio, Minister of State of, for the Environment um, and Forest and Climate Change of the Government of India. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Happy to uh, be able to meet one of you, all of you, once again, uh, to, to share with you everything that was discussed, apart from things that uh, we have achieved in terms of uh, discussions with amongst the several countries that you know have taken part in this very, very successful COP. A lot of credit goes to gentleman sitting to the left of me, Mr. Swamitra Dasgupta, who is the IG of Forest Wildlife. Uh, on my right is Amy, who has, uh, you know, uh, uh, captained the entire ship and made sure that it floated and was made to float in the right direction. Uh, she is the Executive Secretary, as you know, of the Conference uh, for the Conservation of Migratory Species. and. Uh, Mr. Sanjay Kumar is with me on stage. He's the additional director of forests from our Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Uh, gentlemen, I really love the way you pronounce my name, Babul Supriyo. I never really had a, a gentleman migrating from a different country actually pronounce my name correctly. So <laughs> congratulations on that. It shows that we have really had some great interactions where, uh, you know, India as the uh, presidential, uh, which is going to enjoy the presidency for the next three years, um, may have, may have, apart from the uh, you know exchange of ideas, may have also uh, you know inflicted a little bit of um, a little bit of a, of a dialect into the uh, into the delegates who come from foreign countries. So once again, thank you so much. Everything is going to be introduced and uh, spoken to you now, uh, presented to you by Amy. So the it's all over to you, Amy. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, it's an honor to be here again uh, with the, the minister, uh, the additional director, uh, with Dr. Sharma, um, and of course my friend Sumitra Dasgupta, with whom we've worked very hard to make this COP a success. We've uh, issued a press release that gives you some uh, sense of what are some of the major things we're leaving here with. At the opening press conference, we said, you know, there's a lot to do, and, and CMS has a huge role to play to address the trends of biodiversity loss and species loss. We're leaving this conference armed with some very important decisions that will take us forward and with the great leadership of the government of India. Uh, so I think you, you, I, I am interested to hear your questions in terms of some of the accomplishments, and uh, so I won't go through them all here. But I do want to also explain that in, what will happen next in the other room will be, we do have a f just two remaining decisions, actually just one remaining decision, uh, to be agreed by the Conference of the Whole, which is kind of like the technical part of our meeting. And then uh, the Honorable Minister will uh, be chairing the final session, which is our plenary, our COP plenary. So it's kind of back to the beginning. And he will preside over that with some final business that we have to do. There'll be election of new officers to the bodies of CMS, including our standing committee, our scientific council, et cetera. Uh, there'll be some uh, final words spoken. I have some rem uh, final remarks. I think we'll also be hearing from the government of India uh, and a few other important pieces of business. But as you've heard, at the close of the meeting is when the government of India will take on this very important leadership role as the CMS COP presidency. 
and we greatly look forward to working together uh, from today until the next COP uh, to do what we can to address the problems faced by migratory species. So thank you very much. Glad you're all here, and we look forward to your questions. Okay, we'll turn to questions. Okay, I see one hand over there. Um, when you, could you please, yeah, stand up, uh, give us your name, the media house you're working for, and to whom you would like to direct the questions. Hello. Uh, hi, uh, my name is. So, hi, uh, my name is Ishan. I write for Down to Earth magazine. My question is to you, Amy. So, uh, uh, in my understanding, there was a discussion on Article 9 and it's uh, Article 3 and its impl uh, implementation. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it started with this uh, proposed uh, proposal that uh, which included that parties would share trade data in terms of import and export. Can you hear me? Parties would share uh, import export data of Appendix 1 species. And also, the Scientific Council of CMS will undertake a study on the impact of this trade. Now, in the decision, the final decision, the bit about the party sharing the import-export data has been dropped. So with it, uh, given this, um, what would be the impact? How will the CMS know which country is trading what? And also, CMS's mandate is to conserve species under Appendix 1, while CITES has the mandate to do trade. So why is CMS Scientific Council undertaking a study on the impact of this trade, when it, trade isn't even supposed to happen, because even take is restricted? So. Okay. Uh, yeah. Amy, I think. Yeah. I think uh, it's a very technical subject, and Honorable Minister was not a part of the technical discussions. Um, yeah, I think Amy can take the course. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Okay. Um, right. So the issue why there was a discussion on this topic is that um, you know CMS deals with the conservation of migratory species and their habitats. CITES, which is our sister convention, one of our sister conventions, deals with the legal and illegal trade of wildlife, which includes animals and uh, plants. They have a similar system where they have an Appendix 1 and an Appendix 2. And we have Appendix 1 for our species at CMS, which means that you can't take them. That's the main uh, prohibition, which means you're not supposed to hunt them. You're not supposed to take them out of the wild. Um, what's happened in a few cases is there might be a species that's listed on Appendix 1 for CMS, but CM C C CITES uh, has it on their less protective uh, appendix, which is their Appendix 2, which allows legal trade in that species. The issue is simply, if you are a CMS party, you know, should you be trading in a species if it's protected more strongly under CMS? That's the issue. So I'm very pleased with the decision that came out because it gives authority for CMS to investigate this fully. Uh, we'll work with CITES, we'll look at the data, we'll see what's going on on the ground, and then we can come back with a fuller understanding of what's actually happening out there. Uh, so we know, is this legal, is it not legal, and what are the implications of trade uh, in Appendix 1 CMS species on their conservation status? Come again? Parties who have not shared trade data, right? Again, what what I have uh, there was discussion that um, at this point in time we need more information, and so uh, there was a resolution originally proposed, uh, which had to do with what parties would do. But there was a discussion that we're not quite ready for action because we don't know what action is needed by parties. That, that was the sentiment of the room. So this is the first step. But there will be a report back, I'm sure, to the intersessional. We won't wait three years. In other words, we have these meetings of the Standing Committee and the Scientific Council in between. We have 
uh, at least two meetings of each plant in the coming uh, couple of years. So the information that we find will be brought back to them uh, for advice. And uh, I think that is actually very appropriate action. Let's, let's look at what the data show us first, and then we look at what does that mean in terms of policy. Okay, thank you, Emmy. Next question, over there. Thank you, I'm Gopal Katesia from the Engine Express. Uh, my question is uh, to the Executive Secretary. Uh, if uh, the proposal in the budget of uh, Daniel of listing rights, has that issue been sorted out? Uh, secondly, what budget scenario has been agreed upon? And has there been any written representation from Pakistan, any submission? Because I think they have been not represented in the meeting. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I'll try to repeat the question. There was a little bit of a difficulty to to understand. Ah. Yeah. yeah, my question is, uh, has, has there been any agreement on the proposal to deny listing rights to parties, uh, those who are in arrears? Uh, secondly, what budget scenario has been agreed upon, if at all? And uh, has there been any written submission from Pakistan? Because they haven't spoken on the floor of the meeting. Thank you. Okay. 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 Now I've got it. Okay. So there was a, a resolution adopted on the budget. It was just taken place in the in the room. And what that does is adopts our program of work and it adopts a budget for CMS secretariat for our work for the, until the next COP uh, from 2021 and then for three years uh, to 2023. Uh, the issue of arrears, there had been some language in the document that would have said that countries who are more three or more years in arrears are not allowed to actually submit any proposals for listing, for example, uh, or for other measures. And that was not included in the final uh, budget resolution. There still remains, however, two strong uh, uh, punitive measures, if you will, that are in, in the resolution with respect to parties three or more years in arrears, meaning that they owe money. They haven't paid their contributions uh, for three or more years. And those are, number one, they're not allowed to vote. So if they come here and they have credentials, they're in the meeting, they cannot vote. Number two, they're also not to be to serve on any of the governing bodies of CMS. So they can't be the chair, they can't be on the standing committee, they can't be in the scientific council. So those are pretty strong tools. That's your first question. Uh, well, yes. Yeah. The second question is the budget. The what what was adopted was what we call scenario two. So they did not go for the lowest, which is great. Number two is good. It includes a little bit of funding to strengthen the secretariat's. Uh, staffing, let's say, the, the, the support for us. And they also included uh, a, a establishment of a new position, a professional post for avian species. Um, they gave us about two-thirds of the money, new funds for that, and we have to find the rest in savings uh, from my current uh, staffing and vacant posts, that kind of thing. So we're very pleased to have additional funding specifically aimed at avian species, because we need, we need help with that in our, our uh, staffing. The last thing on Pakistan, I'm not aware of any proposals that they have submitted, uh, and I understand they have not uh, joined us at this meeting, so I, I don't know more. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Amy. Uh, any other questions? Right here in front. Hi, I'm I'm Ajit Chha from United News of India. And uh, my question is to Amy that uh, you said that second scenario of budget had been accepted. But uh, at the same time, uh, you had asked for, uh, and there was a proposal for deputy executive that was not accepted. And uh, so uh, in that case, there is some hint that uh, you are not getting enough budget. In that case, how do you uh, see that it will impact uh, the conservation of uh, uh, species? Okay, so if I heard you correctly, another question about the budget and the level of support. Yeah, I mean, honestly, um, budget discussions are always difficult. I mean, it's, uh, as you know, it's not the easiest 
uh, financial time for every country, so it's not so easy uh, to uh, have a, a position that supports an increase. And that's what we got. So I'm, as I said, I'm very grateful that we were able to get an increase uh, over, uh, I should have the percentage, but basically we've increased, first of all, um, with inflationary costs, so we're keeping you know, constant with inflation, which is really important. Um, we've also got uh, about 203,000 euros that was added uh, for additional staffing. That's for three year period. Um, and we also have about 30,000 euros total for three years added for additional support for training and you know, the, uh, making sure that our staff are well equipped to, to carry out their, their responsibilities. But that's just the core funding. I, I think it's very important to stress that we get a lot of funding for what we do and our programmatic activities. So all the things we do in terms of getting out there and doing conservation work, holding meetings, holding technical meetings, you know, having policy discussions, those usually happen through voluntary funds. And we're very pleased, for example, that the government of India, as you know, and I think it was six other countries agreed to give us some voluntary funds as, uh, and they became champions, they were recognized. Uh, we just signed uh, an agreement with UAE, the government of UAE, uh, for quite a few uh, million dollars actually for supporting an office that we have in Abu Dhabi and that supports the work of uh, uh, Raptors, MOU, and Dugongs. So in other words, we have a core budget, it's been increased, and we will continue to have the support for program. And I'm gonna keep working very hard to get you know, even more support through our partners and, and uh, uh, other means. So I'm optimistic about the support for CMS leaving this call. Okay, thank you, Amy. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, please. Uh Amy, my question is directed to you. I'm Meghna from DD News. I wanted to know what are what have been the discussions on illicit uh, illegal trade and killing of migratory birds. And also, Mr. Dasgupta, I wanted to ask you, there was a thing that there will be discussion on uh, marine litter, which are uh, also affecting species. So uh, what, are, what is uh, on both the fronts? I need a world perspective and also from India. Thank you. So should I take it, Amy, first? Marine sure. litters? Sure. Yeah. It's a very important question that you have raised and uh, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister in his speech has already announced that India will be moving ahead with the marine turtle policy and marine stranding policy. Uh, see, there are a number of components in both these policies and one of the component is also concerned about the marine litters and marine pollution. So, uh, yeah, it will be addressed uh, through these policies and that's what have been decided till date. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, just on the... Um just building on the, the plastics, I mean, what was, uh, what, what we brought to this COP, I mean, there's been a lot of focus on marine litter, and that's a huge problem, you know, continues to be, and I know that India has taken a leadership role on this, on this issue of plastic. Uh, in fact, this conference is plastic-free, which was amazing, um, and that's just one, one step. But what we found is there's very little scientific studies on the existence and the impact of plastic pollution on other kinds of environmental areas, including freshwater and uh, terrestrial species. And there have been a few studies, and the studies that we've seen actually do show that there's uh, some problems. So we have, essentially, the decision here is calling for more work to be done to look at uh, what's happening. And in fact, speaking of funding, I think we're gonna get some funding, I can't say from who or confirm it yet, but we've been having discussions that would support some additional scientific work on this very topic. Uh, so that's great. In terms of the illegal trade, first let me actually backtrack and say, we are coming out of here with decisions to move us forward on every single topic that we brought to this COP. So it's very successful. I think we have over 40 resolutions that have been uh, moving forward, including on the topic of the illegal uh, trade and killing of birds. So I actually have not followed the exact outcome, but all of the documents, you can see them. They're all going to be posted on our website so you can see exactly what was agreed on any topic that you're interested in. It's on our, it's called our in-session documents on our website, and we can show you how to find that if, if you don't see it. Uh, but the positive news is, you know, we got consensus to move forward on every single topic that we brought to this COP. 
uh, and, and additional commitments that have come forward. There's one thing that, if you may, uh, just one thing that I want to add. When you're talking about poaching, uh, we know that the Great Indian Bustard is one bird which is really facing a very uh, severe uh, threat of extinction. And uh, there is one, uh, I mean, we are, we are a little worried about the killings and the poaching that is happening in the other side of the border that's uh, in Pakistan. And uh, as you know that uh, Great Indian Bustard is, is included in Appendix 1. So the, all the parties who are party to this, uh, you know, who are, uh, are uh, party to this entire CMS, they are obligated, they are, it is mandatory for them to follow the rules and regulations. So we hope and we uh, shall do, Amy will, uh, and we'll all, all work together as the, uh, you know, as the, as the leader to ensure that uh, all the countries, including Pakistan, do what is necessary for, uh, you know, saving the Indian bastard. One. Secondly, uh, if I may add a little bit about the plastic, you have seen that our Honorable Prime Minister had actually taken the leadership role. He has actually gone to the beaches, done the flogging, taking plastic away because, uh, you know, researchers have actually shown that fishes around South China Sea or, uh, you know, uh, in, in Japan, in marine uh, fishes, they have actually found, uh, you know, uh, plastic uh, p particles which are, you know, a few microns in size inside the cell of the uh, my, of the organisms, the fishes and everything. Mm. So those are the scientific studies that have come forward. So all of us are taking it very, very seriously and India along with uh, all the countries are going to take a, you know, very, we are all going to play as leaders to ensure that marine, marine littering in, for which we really do not have much scientific study can actually go forward and we can help the marine species in a better way. Okay, thank you, Mr. Suprio. Next question over there, please. Hello, I'm Imanchu here. You just mentioned about the GIB. Now, if I look at the IUCN reports, they are clearly stating that there's no specific information about the GIB in Pakistan. So now, since it, it might get included in Ma Appendix 1, so would IUCN is also a party to this CMS? So would you request IUCN to take up a study in Pakistan about GIB? Let me take it. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, G GIB is a big question, uh, you know, internationally and especially it starts off in India. So the number as we have, when we submitted our proposal, we have stated that the number has gone down to nearly 150 now. So it can be said that it is in the brink of disaster. So India wants that it will do anything for conservation of these species. The first thing that they have done, they have already initiated a project for conservation of the great Indian bustard in the country itself. The initial programs are now concentrated towards Rajasthan and uh, other states like Maharashtra, Gujarat are also a part of that project. Side by side, there are reports, scientific reports that the birds do fly to Pakistan. So we need to ensure that the species receives equal protection that we are providing here in India in the neighboring countries. That was the very purpose for which we wanted, we wanted to use the CMS instrument so that this particular species, which is facing, the, uh, the, uh, rather you can say it's in the brink of disaster, should be protected the best way possible. And that's what our Honorable Minister has stated. Our only intention here is that we want the neighboring countries where the species, especially the GIB which flies, are also given equal status of protection so that the birds, the number starts increasing and one day we can say that the GIB is out of endangerment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sumitra. Um, I think we have time for two more questions. Over there, please. Oh, no. I'm uh, Joy Mala from ANI. Uh, sir, I have a, a question. Like, there are uh, collaborations there, uh, worldwide uh, regarding the uh, transborder conversations, uh, conservations. Yet, we are seeing threats. We are uh, in this uh, uh, particular perspective. How successful do you think such international conventions and also as uh, they are in parties and all? How successful do you think it comes up to this? 
Okay, I, th I think we need to just repeat the last part of your question. That was a little bit unclear. So what is the question, please? Uh, just that, uh, how successful do you think such international conventions yet? We are seeing uh, the uh, collaborations yet. There are poachings, there are uh, conversations, uh, threats to the animals, although there are treaties and also. I just want to know how successful and what are the specific things, uh, very ground reports or the specific things that's been done so far. Okay. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a very good question uh, because, you know, we are at the international level. What we do is bring countries and uh, partners, NGOs, scientists, and others together so we can have a discussion, we can make agreements on what is needed. But then, you know, when it comes to implementation, um, you know, my office uh, supports it, but we're not at the forefront. What, who's at the forefront are uh, the countries themselves, uh, the, the entities are on the ground actually working on the conservation issues and it's not always easy. That's absolutely correct. And, you know, there are issues sometimes of, uh, you know, compliance or enforcement or other factors. So a good example, in fact, we, we issued the study, we talked about it in the opening press conference and during the meeting, uh, is this uh, report that we looked at on the status of migratory species and we found at least initially some worrying uh, statistics, including that 70% of the species on Appendix 1 are declining in population. Uh, so it's not 70% of them, it's 70%, in other words, uh, the trend overall is going down for the majority of the species. That's how you should interpret that. We need to look more closely though about what does that mean at the species level, what's actually happening on the ground, but I can explain that that includes a few different uh, risks. One, in, one such risk is habitat loss. Uh, ag agriculture tends to be the biggest cause of ha habitat loss globally. So do, you know, I'm not saying particular area or country, but globally, habitat loss is still a huge problem for biodiversity generally and for our species. But also for our species is the issue of over-exploitation. That means basically taking them out of the wild, whether it be intentionally or unintentionally. So intentionally could be uh, killing them, hunting them, uh, or taking them out for other purposes, for zoos, for trade, poaching. It also can mean unintentionally, such as in the example of bycatch, of unintended, you know, the non-target species in a fishery. So the final point is we have a lot of work to do. There's no question. And this, this meeting uh, provides the direction uh, that we need to go in, but we need uh, all of our partners uh, and uh, others to help us to make sure that we implement what has been agreed here. Okay, thank you. I think... To Amy and to the minister, that when uh, you are saying that... The uh, take the mic. Now India will be leading uh, the presidency for three years and uh, uh, it will take a, take a lead role. Uh, what is being done about the wetlands that are being destroyed by the dumping industrial effluents? Even right, right uh, from this place, a few kilometers from this place, a wetland is being destroyed called Gatera. Effluents are being dumped and nothing is being done about it. Forest officials, they have, they have received lots of complaints regarding them from the NGOs and activists. So let me and you. they are saying that it is not our subject, it is the, it is the subject of revenue yeah. department. Yeah. So, this, so this, this is kind is of... The uh, uh, destruction is going on. So, hello? Yes. One second. So, what is being done to the minister yeah. as well as for the ME? This question. Yeah, yeah. This is not something that really ME can answer because this is, you're talking about something which is a problem in India. And let me assure you that uh, for a very long time, uh, the, the threat that was being, uh, that was being imposed on wetlands with people being careless about it has cost us. And therefore, right now, we have some very stringent measures in terms of how to deal with it. But having the measures in place do not eradicate. eradicate. There are a lot of laws, there are, you know, uh, stringent penalties in place, but it has not stopped it. And there is no, uh, there is no, I am not hesitating at all to admit that it, have, it has not been a hundred percent or a, even a, I would say a very, very successful uh, uh, implementation of what we really aspire to do. But in terms of specifics, I would request Mr. Dasgupta to go ahead with it. It is not true that we are not thinking about wetlands and things are not being done at all. That's not really true. To put it in the international forum in that manner might not put things in the uh, uh, 
uh, in the right perspective, given the fact that we have actually created a wetland development authority that has been formed recently, very recently, to ensure that uh, you know this uh, this uh, carelessness, I would call, that was being uh, that was being you know uh, kind of uh, that the wetlands actually uh, faced or the importance that was not given to wetlands are properly addressed, and we have experts and uh, scientists in that panel to not only guide the ministry, but also uh, prepare the right ways to how we can uh, conserve that. So he can uh, throw a little bit of light on it, but I had the opportunity to chair one of, uh, one of, the, uh, one of these meetings, and I was, I was also in a conference in, uh, it happened in Lucknow or Dehradun? Yes, in Dehradun, which was especially for on wetlands. We had it only about a month back, where specifically all the issues pertaining to wetlands were discussed. And it was discussed in the light of this new wetland development authority that has been formed. So the government is doing everything, but to say that we are doing everything means we have solved the problems is right, not right. The approach is there, and in the next three years, has the uh, having taken the leadership role in CMS, uh, we will definitely ensure that we will do we do much better than what we are doing right now. So if you have any specific special Dasgupta, thank you, sir. And you have uh, put the. Uh, uh, context in the right direction. I would just want to add, you know, we understand fully your question. We appreciate what you have said, that there are divergence of a multiplicity of agencies uh, in the management of wetland. But you will appreciate the fact that India has already released its Central Asian Flyway National Action Plan, which envisages the wetlands, all the wetlands, identified wetlands to be a part of the process. That means that action plan has conservation of migratory birds also entails the conservation of the habitats, these wetlands. So we now understand, we have been also told that there is a wetland authority which has been created here with a unified command. All these divergence of thoughts and actions will now be removed and hopefully in the near future, the issue that you are raising will be addressed. So we yeah. are only keeping our fingers crossed, but with the leadership of Central Asian Flyway that the Honorable Prime Minister has also announced, we are hopeful that it will be solved. Okay, thank you very much. That brings us to the end of this press conference. I have to um, let the panel go because the exciting part uh, of the day will start with the plenary um, decisions. So I encourage everyone who's interested to also uh, go into that room. Thank you very much to all of you for this press conference. Um, I also want to say thank you to the media uh, for being here. And yeah, one final word. We, we thank you everyone for uh, for being present, for covering the CMS uh, uh, and putting it in the right perspective in what you saw, not only in, in, in terms of what you saw, what you didn't see, what you want uh, the, f uh, the future CMS to include. And if, uh, if I may, as a last, uh, you know, last word to what you asked, uh, you know, I would say that acknowledging a problem is the right way to understand that you want to solve the problem. If you do not acknowledge the problem and you stay in rhetoric and you stay in denial, the problem never gets solved. So you can understand that holding conferences, especially for wetlands, as I said, I attended one in Dehradun, and to have a wetland development authority in place, which is discussing that, to have our Honorable Prime Minister make specific announcements on it, shows that we are serious about it, and the acknowledgement also comes from there, that we can do much better than what is being done right now. So that's something that I really wanted to add to what I said, and thank you once again, all of you, on part of the uh, government, on part of uh, CMS, Amy, uh, and uh, the government of Gujarat, for all that you have done. Uh, in the last few days, and I hope that you get to see the last plenary session in the in the manner it is going to be performed. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much.